Okay, welcome back. Today I have Paul Eviston back. Paul's uh, top producing realtor in the Vancouver area, Remax. Paul, we had you on just about two months ago, and that was pretty much everything was shut down. weren't sure what was happening then, and what was going to happen in the future. And I wanted to get you back. We're kind of reaching now phase three, I think, almost. Uh, let's get your take of what's going on in the market there in Vancouver. Yeah, well, um, you know, we we've definitely we've definitely seen an altered market. Um, and when I say an altered market, people, I think during the shutdown realized that, you know, their housing needs have changed. And I think what we're seeing right now is we're seeing a lot of people that were living in smaller spaces, examining the possibility of living in larger spaces, particularly people coming out of condos and going into ground oriented living such as half duplexes and townhomes. So, so we're just, I don't mean to interrupt you. So would you say that the, this, uh, this whole COVID one nine is driving people out of the apartments more so than before and into single family or less populated type, you know, high traffic, you know, elevator, et cetera, et cetera stuff. <laughs> I, I think it's I, I think that where the move is is just people realizing that well if I'm now going to work from home on a permanent basis which look I mean Royal Bank came out and said 60% of our workforce is going to work from home BMO came out and said 50% of our workforce is going to work from home so you've got a lot of people that that really works for especially people with you know, young kids and families, you know, they can work around their families at home and, and, and probably be just as productive as they would be in a workspace downtown. So what we're finding, though, is that people need more space. So we're seeing, um, we're seeing a movement. I, I think the biggest move is people that are in smaller spaces like apartments where you know they say well geez you know we'd like to get into something like a townhouse or a half duplex and that's what we're really seeing um a lot of movement in the market is in that space so um, so movement from so i hear you saying movement from smaller to larger condo to townhouse house let's talk a little bit about what we saw initially when we first did the video a couple months ago supply was low demand was still steady enough to maintain pricing what are you seeing right now right now right now we're still seeing um lower volumes than than normal um but we're also seeing less inventory so i think a lot of people that you know were considering moving are just sort of taking a bit of a wait and see attitude towards whether or not to put their home, their detached home on the market. So in the detached side, we're seeing lower inventory than normal for sure. Uh, typically by June, July, uh, in most years, that's when you're, you hit peak inventory. But of course, all the people that normally would have listed their home in March, April, and May, are listing their homes in June, July, and August now. So, so what we've had is we've had a, a fundamental shift of the typical and traditional spring market into the summer. And so what I'm expecting is that, um, you know, we're going to see higher than average uh, numbers of listings come to the market in uh, July and August than typically we would. Um, the 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 real um, you know the real demographic that's buying detached homes have probably seen the least effect um, from COVID you know and and the shutdown um, where I think COVID is going to have the largest effect in on the market are the buyers of um, you know first time buyers. You know, you've you've got a lot of first time buyers that, you know, might have been in their jobs for one or two or three years that maybe now are not working. And so we're going to see a lot of 
inventory come to the market where people, you know, may own a one or two bedroom condo that, you know, could be a challenge for them to, um, you know, make their mortgage payments, you know, once the, uh, the mortgage deferrals end here in the next couple of months, they may decide best for them to sell and, and uh, rent for a while. So that the inventory in that space uh, is on the rise for sure. Um, but um, there's also, you know, still lots of buyers that are out looking because interest rates are so low. So people that do have, you know, people that, um, you know, have solid employment are finding that they all of a sudden qualify for more mortgage based on interest rates. Now, of course, you know, the new rules around credit scores, which you, you can expand on that, Mark, because you, uh, I watched your I watched your excellent piece that you did there a week or two ago about the new rules. Um, and that was that was great information for me um, and my team. Um, but I think that's something that uh, you can expand on. But but um, I think we're we're seeing a lot of people trying to get in before that rule change on July first. And I'm not sure if you're pre-approved. Are you grandfathered after the first? I I'm not sure on that. So maybe I you think could what they're I think that. what they're talking is they're talking a standard uh, rate hold will take you into that uh, you know take you over that uh, July first date. So if you've got a pre-approval and it's whatever, 90-day hold, uh, generally, that's what we're seeing. As far as the, uh, the impact of the credit, I thought, like I said in that video, they've now increased it to 680. And as you know, and as I mentioned, it's a computer-generated score. So there's no real rationale behind it. They've sort of created these, uh, you know, these parameters that would consider your score and what you do and then come up with this round figure. And if you happen to be a 680, you could still have great credit, but because of this new rule as a buyer buying with less than 20% down at high ratio, you, you get locked out. So, you know, that is a big thing. As far as the GDS, TDS, you know, as well as I do dating back, you've been in a long time. Those are still ratios that are above the old 3240. So, I mean, as much as it's going to cut the buying power, I think we're still going to, you know, progress. Um, I don't think that's going to be a real killer. Rates are low. I'm just curious uh, to hear your impact uh, in what's going on there in, in, in even in the single family detached, because it seems kind of busy, but I don't know if that's reflective of just low inventory or what. Yeah. Well, um, again, with, with what the bank of Canada did with, with the prime rate dropping it the way they did, it's made it a lot more interesting for people to make a move up. So someone that's, you know, owns a, a detached home in Vancouver that they're selling for, you know, 2.5, you know, they can, they can make a move up to the 2 million price range quite easily, especially, you know, if they've got a rental suite that's generating, you know, a lot of these rental suites uh, generate, uh, you know, between 1700 to 2500 a month for a nice suite. I mean, Lots of two-bedroom basement suites in the city rent for you know between twenty-two and twenty-five hundred a month, and you and I know, you know, twenty-five hundred a month. You're you're covering off uh, you know half a million dollars in payment Increasing on a mortgage. Buying power for sure, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So you you've got, for example, we just took a property uh, to the market thirty-two forty-eight. East 26th Avenue in Renfrew Heights, fabulous two-year-old home. The revenue it's generating, aside from the owner's space, is $4,450 a month. Holy cow. Yeah. And this is a, a two-year-old home. So, so you've two, got a two million dollars. Two suites, I take it. Sorry? Two suites, I take it. It's got a laneway house in there. Oh, I see. Okay. And it does have two suites. So there's three revenue sources for $44.50 a month. And you've got uh, the owner has, the owner has um, four bedrooms and three bathrooms to themselves. And the revenue covers a million dollars of financing. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a real great time to be making a move up if if people have solid employment and 
and the, the the horizon looks good, it's a great time for people to be making a move up given what interest rates are doing. And so uh, the only, you know, the only caveat being right now in the detached space, inventories have not uh, gotten up to where the demand is yet. So um, I expect that to change here in the coming 30 to 60 days. I think we're going to see a lot of product come to the market here in, in July and August. And um, I think that that will sort of balance the market. But, uh, you know, prices have, you know, because the inventory hasn't overwhelmed the market, prices have remained fairly constant. Um, where we have seen, you know, in the detached sector, where we have seen a bit of a softening, are the the more marginal locations which you know is is understandable but in 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 the better locations around the city the detached market has has fared quite well now paul is that higher end too or would you say the higher end still a little soft the higher end market's still soft for sure soft. once yeah once you get over that uh you know once you get over that you know three and a half million dollar um mark the market you know, is the volume is lower and, and, um, and there's just not as many buyers because, you know, the foreign buyer has essentially been effectively has been eliminated from our market because you can't get in here. Um, and so you, you just, you just have, you know, even, even at the higher end, you still have a very much a local flavor to the, to the buyer pool. Excellent. So, um, I guess in asking your opinion right now, good time to buy and sell kind of both or what are your thoughts? Yeah. Listen, anytime, anytime you're looking to make a move, as long as you buy and sell in the same market, it's all relative. Okay. Right. So if the market's up, you're selling high, buying high. If the market's down, you you know, but obviously a lot of it, comes down to you know what's your objective if you're selling for the last time or buying for the first time that's when it makes the most impact on your decision so you know if you're if you're retiring and selling your your biggest asset uh, as part of your retirement plan you know you really don't want to be selling in a depressed market um, conversely if you're buying um, and you're buying for the first time you know, it's great to buy in a depressed market. Um, so uh, if you're buying and selling, though, um, it's all relative as long as you do it in, in the same time frame. And right now, given interest rates where they are, it's a great time to make a move up. And, you know, I, I hate to, you know, counsel people to, you know, take bigger mortgages. But the bottom line is the cost of the money, the cost of the money is... Cheap, is yeah it's, it's yeah. very, very attractive right now. So it's a great time to, to, you know, for people to come out of their two bedroom condo and get into a, a townhouse, a half duplex. And that's where we're seeing the greatest activity in the marketplace right now is in the attached sector. So people coming out of condos and into half duplexes, and townhomes. Ground oriented living is what people want. They don't necessarily want, you know, the whole house. And that's why the newer product is, is really doing well right now because people want turnkey professionals. They come home from work. They just want to, you know, turn on their irrigation system and, and uh, take the dog for a walk. They don't want to be you know, trying to fix old wiring and, yeah, yeah, no, and I hear you. you know, do in, all that in, work. In winding up here, one last question. Would you say that the markets uh, pretty much worked in the work around with COVID, open houses, showings, all that stuff? Or do you think it's still an issue? Oh, absolutely. Listen, this, this pandemic has streamlined our business in a fabulous way. I mean, you know, the people that are coming to view homes today, they're real buyers. They're not, you know, they're not tire kickers. They're not people out looking for decorating ideas. They're people that are looking to buy homes. And so rather than have an open house for two hours where you've got neighbors and, and uh, you know, just looky lose rolling through checking out your home, we're showing by appointment. We're using uh, virtual tours and, and we're qualifying people 
very heavily before uh, showing. For example, you know, some properties, we don't show the suites um, or the laneway house uh, at all before we get an accepted offer. So, you know, and people are happy to do that because they've done the, the virtual tour walkthrough of the home. So they know what everything looks like. Really, the, it, you know, the, the physical visit is just to reinforce what they saw on the virtual tour. So, right. And, and um, I, think, I think that's key, Paul, because I've, you know, I've had several conversations with people that I think are making decisions based on the old way. Oh, I don't want people coming through my house. But when I hear you talk, I'm, you, you know, it's a total different ballgame. It's like, well, no, you, the only people that are going to be coming through your house now are pretty much solid seen it pre-approved ready to make an offer not like before guys driving around on a sunday and hey you know talking to his wife and say hey you want to go in an open house just to have a look at what the house looks like that's probably not the case now absolutely not it's like i said it's really streamlined our business and um it's 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 narrowed it down to just you know um the the process is just so much more pure you know you're you're just getting people through that that are real that pretty much have seen the inside of the house already. And some of these walkthroughs we're getting now, I mean, <clears throat> we sold one last week where the, you know, the successful bidder on the property, we, we had, we had six offers on the house and the successful bidder was in and out of the house in less than 10 minutes. They did a, they did less than 10 minute walkthrough up and down, out they went and they, and they bought the home and they paid a hundred and, you know, they paid 155000 above the asking price after seeing it for less than 10 minutes, you know. Um, so, so yeah, no, the, the, it, it's, you know, COVID has caused us all to reevaluate what is essential, right? right? What is essential to us? And I think what's become clear to me, having seen what's going on in the real estate market, is that housing is essential. And, and more space in people's housing is clearly essential as people are, that are moving right now are moving for that reason mainly, to gain more space, uh, to, to use their home as a place to work and a place to live. So um, much like I think what's going to happen to a lot of the office towers downtown over the next 10 years you know, if you've got the Royal Bank pulling 60% of their workforce out and working from home, you're going to see a lot of these um, commercial towers downtown converted to residential space. Yeah, and um, yeah, and that's, you know, we're talking today. Um, my team, we had a meeting and we, you know, we're talking, what's going to happen to cruise ships? You know, um, you can see governments purchasing for example, Carnival Cruise Lines, who have, you know, a, a very small likelihood of staying in business, you can see governments purchasing those cruise ships and turning them into social housing, yeah. right? Where people don't need a big space to live. Um, and there's going to be a lot of changes over the next 10 years as a result of COVID and pandemics in general, because yeah. it's not, listen, this, this isn't going to be the last one we see this is going to be as the the planet gets more and more populated we're going to see more and more pandemics and and big big changes in the way we live as a result of the population of our planet right so just in closing here paul um obviously some great information i'm going to put the video up there best way to get a hold of you uh paulevaston.com or paul, paulevaston.com yeah you bet just Perfect. jump on the website and send us an email. And uh, thanks a lot for having me on. No, today, I appreciate Mark. That's Always some, a pleasure. That's, that's some great info, Paul. I'll get it out right away and we'll talk uh, later on. Sounds good. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Mark.